You are a newly minted broker now in San Diego. And um, I found you on Instagram. You've been sharing your story um, and your journey going from agent to broker. And so do you kind of want to just tell us a little bit um, about what you've been doing and kind of the process of that? Yeah, sure. So I originally started my career um, in home loans many years ago. And um, when the crash happened back in 2007, I went back to corporate America and realized that corp corporate America really wasn't for me. I felt like I couldn't be the entrepreneur that I was meant to be. So I got back into real estate as a real estate agent. Um, and I worked at Berkshire Hathaway La Jolla for a little over four years on a team there. And I hired a coach um, late in my career, like four years into real estate. And he actually encouraged and pushed me to go for my broker's license. So initially, it wasn't really a thought of becoming a broker until... I hired a coach and just kind of saw another um, avenue or opportunity for me to really be an entrepreneur. And so when you hired a coach, like what made you think, okay, like I need to talk to someone else. I need to get an outside perspective. And like, what was that process like? Real estate can be really lonely. Um, typically, you work as an individual unless you are on a team. And Berkshire Hathaway actually works with uh, Tom Ferry, and they encourage agents to go to these big, huge Tom Ferry seminars. And I loved that concept, but I wanted to be different, so I decided to hire a different type of life coach, um, maybe someone who wasn't real estate enthusiastic, but more of like a championship lifestyle, something that I could relate to because I also played volleyball previously, and I'm just very competitive and saw that as an opportunity um, to get better and grow, and it's always good to have a second perspective, a second opinion, and it actually brought me to where I am now. That's awesome. The And so the, what I was kind of mentioning to you earlier is what brought me to you was not really a coach, but I went through this program called Lifebook and it's really like designing your life and what you would want it to be like. And one of the things that I decided that I wanted was to live on the beach in California. So part of my like vision boarding exercise was finding houses and finding locations. And that's how I found you. So that's why I always love your posts. You post so many like pictures of the beach and like little cottages and all these like beautiful homes. So that's just how I found you. And I've just really been interested in your journey. Um, so do you do vision boarding at all? Like, was that part of your coaching process? You know, it was more of like a, um, a path sequence where you kind of, you start with your end vision and then you work backwards. Mm -hmm. So as far as the coaching, I didn't do a vision board, but I am very visual. I use Pinterest a lot. And so I might not have like a physical vision board in my house, but Pinterest is my, my go-to. So when I want to go on vacation or if I see like home decor that I like, things like that, Pinterest is my vision board. Yeah, I, I use it for that too. Um, so one of the things that I like to do on this podcast is ask people what do they think is the biggest problem in the world in everything that you've like encountered in life? And it's sort of like, what's the one thing that you wish people knew? Ooh. That's a good question. Um, I think for me, it would be to lift people up. Um, a big thing for me is always to try to see the bright side, um, look for the positive, look for something. Maybe it was a hard lesson, but instead of putting someone down about their mistake or what happened, let's try and encourage people. Let's try and, and do something for the betterment of that person's 
you know, attitude or the way that they might accomplish something. So I think for me, it would be more positivity. Yeah. And I mean, if you work in the real estate industry and you were around and working during the crash, is that sort of something that you used then? Like, how did you, you obviously made a big transition during that time. Like, can you go a little bit more in depth? I mean, I can't even imagine what it would be like if your whole industry just, like, crashed overnight, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, you know, it's interesting because we are going through a housing transition right now. I'm sure you've heard a lot about, you know, the California housing bubble and, you know, what's coming next. People can't afford to live here. Or it's too expensive. I mean, what have you heard about the San Diego real estate market or living in California? Well, I do know that it's expensive, um, but we're, so I live now in the woods, in the middle of the woods, in the middle of nowhere, but I just moved from Charleston. And so Charleston's, I mean, it's not comparable to La Hall at all, but um, it is an expensive city in a relatively, like it's in South Carolina. This is not like a super wealthy state like California, but all of a sudden you have this one pocket of a town that the real estate is just astronomical. It's absolutely unaffordable for the majority of the people who live there. Um, and it's kind of one of the reasons that I moved. Okay. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with Charleston at all, but if, if what your area is anything like that, I can totally understand. I mean, they had problems where restaurants had to close yeah. down because they couldn't get wait staff because the wait staff had to live an hour out and then they couldn't afford parking. Like the city went and changed the parking from like 25 wow. cents an hour to like $2 an hour and multiple restaurants closed. And that was the main reason that they cited was we can't even find like servers. We can't find bartenders. You know, we can't find anyone to work yeah. here. Yeah. Is that yeah. sort of a similar so, scenario? And the, same, the same thing with, with real estate. Actually, where our economy is booming right now, um, but our housing market has taken a little bit of a, a slowdown pace because the affordability has become a major issue and, and buyers just aren't buying anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So back when the crash happened back in 2007, 2008, 7 out of 10 homeowners were losing their homes to foreclosure, right? Well, now the buyers aren't buying. We don't have those you know, stated income, stated asset home loans anymore. So people really have to qualify for what they can buy. And I think that home buyers are kind of taking a step back and waiting for the market to shift a little bit. And we could see that towards the end of the year as far as prices leveling out. And hopefully that happy medium where, you know, home buyers and home sellers can come together and just really keep this market going. Yeah. Um, so, Another thing that and I it's know. Always changing the, the real estate. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. And it's just that the real estate market is always changing. So, as you know, and somebody working in the industry, you always have to change your style, your approach. You might be going for listings, or you might be working strictly with buyers. It's just it's always constantly changing. So you have to be ready for that. And what else do you kind of? know now that you've been in this industry so long because I know that like I've been following your journey and you just passed your broker's exam but you already have yeah. like an amazing website you already have your Instagram where you've been kind of building and posting and like what are some things that you've learned and that you are going to carry into your um, broker role consistency is key staying consistent and um, always trying to feed um, those who are watching something that they are interested in and also just never giving up really. I mean, real estate career doesn't happen overnight. You don't, a lot of people have a misconception about real estate that you, you know, you make millions of dollars your first couple of years in the industry. It could take me 10 years to grow a million dollar, you know, real estate business. It's, it's not as easy as it might look. And I think that the key is just never giving up. So what keeps you motivated, like, and what are some things that kind of bring you down? Like, what setbacks have you had that you had to overcome? A major setback for me was back in um, 20, let's see, it was 2016. 
I was working in the luxury real estate market and it was really taking a hit. Sales weren't going as smoothly as even the tenured real estate agents would like. And so for me, I went 12 months without closing a transaction. That's a long time to not close a transaction. And when you're 100% commission, you have to find other ways to feed your family. So Mm -hmm. I think it's just always constantly um, finding ways to make residual income. You know, it might be writing an ebook and selling it. It might be, you know, um, getting involved with sponsorships and having somebody, you know, sponsor your Instagram, something along those lines of being out of the box versus just pounding the pavement. Yeah. So um, I really feel like uh, it's just, you have to constantly think of new ways, innovative to stay alive in this business because, you know, 30 years in the industry, you're going to be good, but it's not quitting after that 12th year. Right. Right. So what keeps you going? Like, what is your love? Are you a salesperson? Do you love, or do you love like the, uh, like the staging process? Like what's the, your favorite part of the business? I love working with buyers. I love working with buyers. I love helping them find, you know, maybe their first home or, you know, their dream home, whatever it is. I enjoy the home touring process and finding them exactly what it is that they're looking for. Um, Home sellers, I love working with home sellers, but I have a little bit more of a connection with a home buyer, and I think it's just um, helping them achieve their goal, I think, is what really is satisfactory for me. And it's always constantly trying to up my game and provide that that service so that they refer their friends and their family to me. Is that something that you've seen so far? Do you get more of your business from referrals or are people finding you on Instagram? Like how do people come to you? Actually, I've I've received a couple of different um, social media contacts. I, I got my first million dollar listing through LinkedIn. Um, I had two transactions this year from Instagram. So, uh, I do feel like social media is the future and I don't have to necessarily run newspaper ads to be successful in this business. I can reach out through Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of those avenues that are really free for us unless I decide to do some kind of paid post. But, um, it's working well for me and I I think I'm just going to keep pushing that angle versus the hardcore run an ad in the newspaper every Sunday. Right. So tell me about the LinkedIn. I want to know what kind of like post was it or was it an engagement with someone? How did that one come about? So LinkedIn, um, that was back in 20, I want to say 2015. And it just so happened that the person who referred me knew the person who lived in La Jolla and she was a Temple alumni. So I went to Temple University and she saw my LinkedIn profile. She saw I was in La Jolla and she saw that I graduated from Temple. So she referred her girlfriend to me. And from that point on, I made the appointment to visit her home and, and show her, you know, the marketing plan for selling her home. And it just all, it just all went really, really smooth. Wow, that is really cool. I love hearing about that. I love hearing about like Christmas gifts. Christmas gifts. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So, do you do yeah. like on your Instagram? I know that you're posting like how to stage your home, all the ways to prep, and like tips when you're selling. Do you do that kind of content on your LinkedIn as well? You know, I try to share everything that I post on LinkedIn. Um, and my business partner, he runs the LinkedIn side. So I stay more on the creative, like the Pinterest, the Instagram, the Facebooks, and he does more of like the business LinkedIn and advertisement, things like that. But I know he does share my blog posts and things like that on LinkedIn. So I do run um, a blog. I've been running it for gosh, eight years now. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's just a wealth of information that I'm currently trying to update because there's a lot of posts from back in 2008 that, you know, the pictures might not have come through to now. So I have to go in and edit everything. Mm -hmm. But the blog is really kind of where it all started. So what's that called? And like, how did you start it? What was like the, the thought behind it? I went, I went with bloggers. It was back in 
2008, and that's when Blogger was like the main platform for blogging. Mm-hmm. Um, so the actual address is Team Shuko, T-E-A-M, Shuko is S-C-H-U-C-O, dot blogspot, dot com. Okay. So it's literally just a blogger, old school blog. I've never attached a dot com um, address to it. I just kept it as is. And it kind of just runs itself. It's really nice. So do you get a lot of people reading it and, like, asking questions based on that? Comments um, haven't really been active, but I would say that's my fault because I don't really stay consistent on the blog. I might blog twice in one month or once in one month. I'm not really – that's one thing I want to do moving into 2019 is be more consistent and blog at least once a week because it does provide a lot of um, traction. When I'm posting consistently, we could have anywhere from 500 to 1,000 page hits a day. It just really depends, which is, yeah. it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you go from like 20 hits a day to, to 500 a day, it, you can see that, that movement. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. And then do, do you think those people are... That's just based on consistency. Yeah, consistency. And do you think those people are people who are looking at it in, like, a Pinterest way, like, just, you know, kind of capturing the imagery? Or are they, like, true buyers and sellers that are, like, doing their homework? I would say majority of it comes from a Google search. And oh. people are just Google searching and they're coming across my articles because a lot of hits sometimes come from articles I wrote back in 20, you know, 2013, 2012, and I'm seeing that they're, they're coming from Google. Oh, that's amazing. So when you're not doing yeah, real estate so and you're not, you know, working on your business, what kind of things do you like to do and like around town or traveling? Well, currently, I feel like I live in the best place to vacation. <laughs> so yeah. We're building our business. We haven't taken any major vacations in the last couple of years, and we probably won't just because when I'm not working, we ride our bikes in town. We go down to the, the bay. We can go to the beach. I mean, it, I literally feel like I'm on vacation every day. It so, looks like um, it based on all your stories. I, I love watching them. <laughs> it, it does. On my lunch break, I can go down and, you know, go shell hunting if I want to. I mean, it's really just another thing that the, the life coach has brought, you know, to fruition is you don't have to work 24-7. Like, if you want to take a break for two hours in the middle of the day, it's okay because we know you're working at 7 o'clock at night or 8 o'clock at night, right? Mm-hmm. So it's taking more time to kind of enjoy life and the things that, that we're so fortunate to enjoy here in San Diego. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I try to do that too. I try to, you know, not beat myself for for taking a few hours every day to, you know, just be outside and not looking at a screen. I'm really working on the no screen time. (laughs) It's hard, but you know what? It's worth it. And I think the hard part is you want to capture your, you know, your stories while you're out and about and the fun things that you do, but... At the same time, it's like, put the phone down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put it in the car and leave it in the car and just do something. <laughs> That's yeah. always, it's, and, exactly. and then it's crazy how, how different you feel after you put it away for a little while. I noticed that, like, especially if I can minimize it in the you morning. You get used to it, right? Yeah. I can totally get used to it. I'm like, I don't even miss this phone anymore. But I mean, it is necessary. Like all the things you talked about, yeah. it's so necessary and it's so helpful and it's amazing because all of it's free and we get to connect to people and find people and people can find us. But sometimes it is nice to put it away and yeah. forget about it. Unplug. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So when are you moving to San Diego? I do not know. I, <laughs> when all of the other things on my vision board line up, then I will be there. But yeah, it's so Perfect. beautiful. And I love seeing Perfect. all your pictures. Well, if you ever visit or you come to hang out, reach out to me. I'd love to go have lunch or something. I totally will. I absolutely will. 
Well, thank you so, so much for being here today. Are there any parting thoughts you have? Um, maybe for people who are in the um, buying and selling time in their life? Ooh, well, thank you for having me. And I would say, um, you know, home buying is different for everybody. And you'll know when you're ready because your affordability and your lifestyle, it all just kind of comes together. And I would say when you are ready, definitely reach out to a real estate agent. Um, you can always contact me. And make sure that, that you enjoy working with them because you're literally going to be working with that person for the next three to four months of your life. Yeah. And so where can people find you? I know you're on Instagram. And if you're home selling. Oh, yeah, if you're selling. I am on Instagram. Um, if you're home selling, I would say now's the time. Um, I think prices are really going to kind of flatten out. They might go up a little bit higher, but... If you've just been thinking about it for a second, definitely, you know, get a professional opinion and see if, if it's your time to either, you know, upgrade or, or maybe take a step down and buy a condo or something like that. Gotcha. And so people can find you on Instagram. It's at love it or list it with T. And where else can they find you? Yeah. Oh, goodness. I am on Pinterest at Shuko Designs, which is S. H U C O Designs, D E S I G N S. And I am um, on Twitter at Shuko, Team Shuko One. So Twitter would be Team Shuko One. And Facebook, we just launched our Facebook page, which is Lux R E S D. And that's your website as well, too, right? Yes, our website is also luxresd.com. 